In this presentation, we are going to be discussing the pros and cons regarding the Generation 4 nuclear reactor design for the VHTR. The VHTR is a very high temperature reactor. It is known as such because it operates at temperatures much greater than conventional nuclear reactors. The VHTR is an advanced design which falls into the Generation 4 branch of reactor types. The Generation 4 designs were selected on the basis of having clean, safe, and cost-effective means of meeting increased energy demands on a sustainable basis, while being resistant to the diversion of materials for weapons proliferation and secure from terrorist attacks. These qualifications were decided by GIF, the Generation 4 International Forum, back in 2002, when they announced the VHTR design, among five others that were the reactor technologies they believe represent the future of nuclear energy. The VHTR has a number of benefits over current and other planned reactor types. Most significantly, it is virtually incapable of meltdown due to the passive safety in its fuel and moderator designs. The VHTR also produces little radiation outside the core, meaning its high temperature coolant could be used to produce heat for other industrial processes. The type of nuclear fuel used in VHTRs is called TRISO, which stands for Tristructural Isotropic. The name refers to the fact that the uranium fuel particles are shielded in multiple layers of isotropic material, as well as a graphite encasing. The triso fuel is more commonly known for its pebble structure. The multiple layers act as a pressure vessel, preventing unwanted leakage of radioisotopes as well as its own shielding once it needs to be disposed of. Depending on, on the design of the VHTR, there are two different methods by which the reactor is cooled using molten salt or the more frequently used option, helium. In the former method, the pebbles of triso fuel are suspended in a circulating pool of molten salt. Spent fuel is injected to the bottom of the pool, and cooled fuel towards the top is reintroduced to the cycle. This method has been researched due to its ability to withstand far more heat than other coolant options at temperatures exceeding 1400 degrees Celsius and thus providing a much higher power density factor. The latter and more common coolant in use today is helium. As a noble gas, it is inert, therefore insulating the effects of radiation from the fuel. This makes it the safest option as it minimizes the potential for leakage. The higher temperatures of the VHTR present a variety of challenges for the materials, components, radiological release, and safety of the nuclear reactor. The increased operating temperature also leads to the increased risk of graphite oxidation and dust explosion from the graphite-coated fuel cells within the reactor. Uncertainty in modeling the flow for the gas coolant also complicates the design process, and minuscule variations in the design specifications and assembly lead to an increased chance of leakage and therefore coolant contamination. Currently, the VHDR designs utilize reactor vessel auxiliary cooling system RVACs for passive decay heat removal. This method of heat removal ensures that during the shutdown of any VHCR reactor, no matter the intensity of the temperature, will cool itself down safely without running the risk of a meltdown. Rigorous material testing, extensive reaction simulations, thorough heat flow modeling, and other research and development processes also aid in assuring that the reactor will operate safely, even under extreme conditions. The VHCR's ability to integrate with industrial processes would save both energy and money. Its higher operating temperature gives the VHTR a thermal efficiency of over 50%, meaning more energy could be produced per unit of fuel than current designs which have an efficiency of at best 40%. The downside of the VHTR is that the radically different design from current reactors would require extensive operator training or retraining in order to operate safely. For the construction itself, current estimates for building a VHTR are at about $4 billion, but natural gas which the VHTR's waste heat would ideally replace in industrial processes, is currently cheap enough that replacing it is not a priority. Much research still needs to be made into alloys and higher quality graphite that can function under the high temperature conditions of the VHTR. Current options are too expensive or too difficult to mass produce. A fuel separation and disposal process must also be developed for VHTRs since their spent fuel cannot be treated the same as LWR fuel. If costs can be minimized and designs optimized, even the earliest estimates put the first commercial VHTR online in the mid-2020s.